morning, y'all. We are headed out to Ross Reels today. So for folks who are unfamiliar, these guys are a fly fishing reels company. They have a great facility here in Montrose. They've been located here for over 30 years, I think. So I'm really excited to see it. Let's go check it out. here Ross Reels has since 1985. It's a it's a really huge advantage to us. It's uh, just under an acre on the base level um, and it's I think it's 41,000 square feet in total. That's so awesome. it's allowed us to grow and to integrate other companies. Mm -hmm. Let's uh, walk into the assembly area. It really speaks of what we can do. These, this is a brand new product that for Able, the Rove Reel, that has just been shipping to customers this month on time, which is uh, pretty fascinating considering all the supply chain issues right. other manufacturers have had. We've had our own. To pull this off has been an amazing feat, and I couldn't be more proud of the team for yeah. that really there's so much attention to detail on this it's all it's all anodized mm -hmm. so it's not not a paint that's applied in there this is actually the aluminum oxide type finish that you'd see with a type 2 anodize but our artists in California will hand apply that paint per se yep. to this finish and get the exquisite details you can see the veining you zoom in on that central layer of scales, you can see the veining in it. Oh, I do see it. It right just makes it, it stands out from anything, yeah. anything else that's out on the market. These spools where the line is contained, we design and manufacture in Montrose. Mm -hmm. The frame that holds everything in place is designed and manufactured here in Montrose. The drag disc underneath with all the flies laser engraved in the background. Yeah, same so cool. scenario here. The drag knob tying it all together, same scenario. So it's, it's a very unique story of where everything we possibly can manufacture in-house, we do so. This, this room was designed with the intent of, of an open approach for our engineering department, which is over here by the American flag our quality department, which is a team of engineers um, in this area here. And they're integrated within an area where the assembly team resides as well. So okay. any, any kind of challenges we uncover, there's someone here who can be communicated with quickly to help address some challenges and overcome obstacles. Okay. And I think it's helped us fuse a, a better team a greater culture of teammanship, and people feel a bit more um, as contributing towards the brand and its yeah. goals. Well, I think one thing we appreciate about this, call it our beehive here, yeah. and you can pan around and see a lot of activity, is these folks are all connected with the brand. They know what's going on. They can give feedback to help us improve our product every single business day. This is pretty cool over here, kind of the final quality touch point that uh, Adam is performing. These hey, are Adam, I'm Mike. Good nice to meet you. So uh, every reel before it leaves the shop, we make sure to go through, touch it just like a customer would, make sure the drag works, make sure that the spool comes off, make sure that it spins good. Yep. On to the next one. We do this before every reel goes in a box, just so when a customer picks it up for the first time, right. they don't see anything bad about our reels. And almost everyone looks great when it comes out of the box. And even at this point here, this is uh, the product has came from our California facility mm -hmm. back to us here in Montrose, which triggers yet another quality checkpoint. Right. Where we'll, we'll look at the, the quality of the surface finish and anodize process and ensure that it meets all of our standards. Once it does, we pass it along to, uh, to the inventory team to integrate it into further manufacturing steps. So in our machine shop out here, um, there's many machines. We're doing setups all the time on different parts that we need, uh, new demand. 
and as they are set up, we'll have what's called a first article come in. That will be the first time a part has been ran newly on a new work order. Um, that part will be placed over here and ring in into our quality control system. And if it's a first article that lets me know, I need to do a super thorough check on all of our dimensions according to drawings and what operation's going on, as well as just how things are looking and comparing them to parts that are finished. That helps a lot, What's what interfaces and if that's fitting well. So for example, I have a little bin of parts here that'll help me do checks like that just to make sure stuff comes through. And then once that first article is approved, it goes back to the machine shop and that's their go ahead to run what we call in process, in process parts so over the next couple days through the work order. Um, the in process parts will come in just to ensure that everything's still going as planned. Great. And that's how we get good parts through. Other than that, we have some really cool machinery over here that aids us to do that other than just the simple calipers, height gauges. <laughs> right, exactly. Yeah, so the new technology that's being incorporated into this, into this quality control process has been really fun to work with. We're really proud of this area. This is our machine uh, machining area where all the components that we manufacture get started from raw material and machined or manufactured in some form in this zone. So this is where the adventure begins for all of our Able reels and Ross reels. Uh, they come in the form of bar stock, aluminum bar stock of varying grades and shapes and sizes. And we process them from long bar stock into some work piece that we can manage. This is a pretty cool approach for us here. It's a very nice uh, automated bandsaw that allows us to cut thousands and thousands of work pieces throughout the year and be very precise with the cuts. It, you can see it in motion now as yeah. we speak. It'll index feed out to the, nut, the other location and make one more cut. In this operation here, we are starting on an able frame, which has its own size and thickness to the workpiece. And after this first touch point, it is uh, processed to look like this right here. Go through a couple of steps on a generic two axis lathe get it prepared for this cycle. Over here are animus spools, where we're following a similar process. We're starting with a workpiece cut here, and starting on a two axis lathe to do the first side profile. And right beside it, so within motion range for the operator, we have the second operation going. Which processes it down from this basic shape and removes the rest of the machining weight, right? Gets it fully prepared for the milling activity that occurs on the spool. These are animus spools and the other primary component is an animus frame. Its manufacturing process is happening right here. This is a very robust manufacturing process where we leverage the ability our mill turn centers have with automation to process from a puck, a solid work piece, to this level of product finish right here. So this, is, this is right out of the machine. Yeah. Uh, Metalworking fluid stains included here. <laughs> yep. But what this allows is that we can we can invest the most uh, precise methods and work holding that we possibly can without any touch points in between. Each time you uh, reposition a product, there's a, a bit of a loss in in its product's integrity or how precise it is. Mm -hmm. And there's also a bit of loss in time. And by manufacturing in this method, we can uh, make quite large batches 
and get them from raw material to a finished reel in a relatively short cycle. Inside the window now, you can actually see the sub-spindle is removing the workpiece from the main spindle and finishing it. So effectively, if this were square features, it would be shaped as a cube of having six sides. And we're manufacturing all six sides of this workpiece. There's one more step that we take after this where we will mill out the top side features mm -hmm. and give it that final cosmetic uh, touch for the customer. In this machining stage here, I think this is a nice shot like this, just how shiny this material is. These are able frames that we've completed the cycles on and are putting a, a lathe process to finish the face. Right now, there's very little work that remains now before its final step. At this workstation, we're performing the rotary milling work on an Evolution R-Salt 9-pin frame. So we've got a lathe profile going into the machine and finished frame and stripper post or foot and stripper post features when it comes out. Benefits of buying a Ross reel or an Able reel mm -hmm. is just the attention to detail and quality. And in order for us to pay attention to every single element, we've decided to bring in-house as much of the manufacturing as we possibly can. So this is a prime um, example of that. Being a very little component, it's the handle post that goes in our reels that we use a, a mill turn machine to produce this out of solid stock and one touch manufacturing. So we're able to keep an eye on the tolerances, make sure the finish is exact and finish the workpiece without touching it. This part here is our Evolution LTX drag knob, which just is blossoming with features here. It's over manufactured, yeah. but that's exactly what we like to do. And again, it's, it's being processed on a machine that feeds in solid stock and machines every single feature, front side and back side work, all in one touch point that gives us the advantage of running lights out, controlling our own quality in-house, and minimizing the number of touch points that people or machines have to interact with. But everything that, when combined together, just enhances product quality. This is always a fun point of our tours here, is that we have uh, very little waste going through the factory. Okay. This this is aluminum, and aluminum is one of the easiest metals to recycle. So we, by recycling, that's exactly what we do. We keep this out of the landfill. We get paid a little portion of our investment back. Right. And I firmly believe that we've seen some metal come back through our factory that were at one time these chips yep. that were recycled. <laughs> We've machined so many hundreds of thousands of reels and been in business since 1973 that it's, it's a cool story to believe in. Approximately 90 to 94% of the metal that we bring into the factory gets removed in a subtractive process. So these methods and machines that you hear, the noises in the background, there's a lot of metal removed before it turns into a fly reel. Once uh, all the frames and spools and components are finished, they come through this area here, which is our, our handwork department. They'll pay attention to any sharp edges, or features that need to be protected before the next step in the process, which may be a combination of many steps, including vibratory finishing, um, cleaning, deburring of some method, or high energy finishing, which is this blue machine in front of us here. Yes. This is the team working their magic on all the product. Yet again, another touch point for quality. 
where if they see any any things that should not be there, they can raise the awareness and, and keep any flaws from getting into customer hands. These products will be isolated into bins around our, our high energy finishing machine here. Mm -hmm. And within a short amount of cycle time, all the sharp edges and, and machining marks get removed from this product. This is our smallest machine in-house. It's a little chucker lathe, a very low horsepower machine, but is just perfect for small components. Yeah, love it. As many companies are today, we've been advancing our robotic technology as much as possible. And we have this machine interfaced with a robot to help our operators and machinists tend to multiple machines throughout the day. This is Jim's area here. He is uh, putting the final touches onto an animus frame. They go into the machine looking like this. And after they come out of the machine, they, they have virtually no weight left to them, but have all the cosmetic features that we're looking for. Once completed, comes out of the machine with all six sides machined and only one more touch point left where we'll put the final porting on the top of the frame. Uh, lots of features in this product line. It takes a, takes a considerable amount of time to manufacture a via spool. And they're rather heavy when they're in, in this spool blank form, so there's a lot of metal removed from the milling cycle. You can see the difference in these two parts here to where one is finished, one is not. The operator can, can be processing this side here with everything that's in the machine now and external to the machine be loading and preparing a pallet that'll focus on the backside work. Got it. So it's, it's got an ability to semi-automate the process and on each cycle they have some throughput. They have something that can be turned into a reel. This is our research and development area of the factory where we can focus on new product development. Um, or in, in a case of this nature, we're actually using the machines for product that we need in a short amount of time. So it serves two purposes, gives us the ability to have more capacity in the right. factory, but also gives us the ability to design and manufacture brand new product without disrupting the natural flow of all the other SKUs that we manage. We like to use the phrase, um, hatching the match. And yeah. in fly fishing terms, uh, an angler's reaction to what's already happening is matching the hatch. Mm -hmm. But when we think of it from a business perspective, we hatch the next idea. We like to lead the industry been very talented at doing so and so it's a funny little buzz phrase that we've come up with internally that's great to keep us thinking outside the box and and being innovative what we do during the day is make fly reels that's great been an awesome career we provide memories for a lot of people but what do we do to secure the future of the trade but also of the industry of fly fishing. And I think this development where we are today in this factory is a great story where the parent company donated back to the city of Montrose a mile and a half of river access that through all my life being a, a native to the, this region has always been private land that you could not trespass and, and enjoy is now forever protected and has been improved upon. The Corps of Engineers and the city and many others were involved in, in truing up the river channels, enhancing the, you know, the waterway for, for channeling and, heart, and uh, having more fish in the ecosystem, you might say, more carrying capacity making it better than it was, and giving back to the public for their enjoyment. They've now constructed a, a trail system, so it's a, a cement pathway that we see people go by just continuously now and enjoying it. 
Um, another thing I'd add is just like we heard from Dan is, you know, how do we sow those seeds of future generations? We've been active within the community to make sure our doors are open for the education systems to come in here to let the, their students see what this area has to offer and see what types of industries exist at a at an age and a time in their life that it can make an impact and change their trajectory of what they pursue. I think Dan's a very cool example of that. So that's some things we do behind the scenes that not too many people would know about. Just got done with my tour at Ross Reels. What an amazing company. Thank you to Tony and everybody at Ross Reels for having me. Hopefully you all enjoyed the tour as much as I did. Let me know in the comments if you like this style of video. Make sure to subscribe. And as always, thanks for supporting your country and shopping American-made. See y'all next time.